Hi, in this section, we're going to look at 1.4, Arrows, Conditions, and Approval Voting. So what we're going to do is uh, try to find paradoxes and methods and understand if a voting method is fair by Arrows, Conditions. But we also want to go ahead and define out what Arrows, Conditions are. Kenneth Arrow was the person who developed these. Now, in class, you should have done this example. If you haven't done it yet, I would like you to do this. And you're going to practice all of your uh, methods that you've used so far because you want to practice for the upcoming quiz. And here are the answers that you can go ahead and check and pause this and look at what you did. Okay, four, arrows conditions. There's five of them. How many? Five, yes. Non-dictatorship is number one. That means that if to be a fair voting system, and that's what Arrow's conditions are doing. They're trying to set up a way to make sure that a voting process is fair. So this is what Kenneth came up with. First of all, a non-dictatorship. That means that one person's vote doesn't mean that that holds true for everybody else regardless. Okay, so essentially a dictator. Number two, individual sovereignty. Each individual should be allowed to order the choices in any way and to indicate ties. Unanimity. If everyone prefers one choice to another, the group ranking should do the same. Sometimes that doesn't come true. And then number four, freedom from irrelevant alternatives. The winning choice should still win if one of the other choices is removed. Sometimes in our preference uh, systems, if we take something out, that would change who would win, even if it wasn't the winner from before. And then five, uniqueness of the group ranking. The method of producing the group ranking should give the same result whenever it is applied to a given set of preferences. The group ranking should also be transitive. Transitive, I always give the example, if the Vikings beat the Bears and the Bears beat the Packers, does that mean the Vikings beat the Packers? Not necessarily, but in math, 5 is greater than 4, and 4 is greater than 3, so 5 is greater than 3. So that is the transitive property. Sometimes it doesn't hold in elections. Okay, now, if we look at some practice problems, what if I disorder, decide to order soft drinks based on the soft drink vote we took in class, but in doing so, I select my preference schedule to do the ordering? Which of Arrow's conditions is violated? I think if you go look back to which one we have here, I think you could figure out that number one, that would be a dictatorship. And so that would be one of the conditions that would be violated. If you take the preferences just based on one person, that would be the dictatorship. So let me get back here. Uh, example two, instead of choosing my preference schedule, I play, place all of the individual preferences in a hat, draw them out a hat, and pl place them in order. Which of Arrow's conditions is violated? And if we go back up here, each individual should be allowed to order them in any way they want to and indicate ties. I think that's what we're uh, violating there because I'm determining the order based upon just drawing out of a hat. Okay, then there's going to be some other examples that we'll go through too, but we'll do some of those in class. Okay, so here's examples three and four. We'll do those in class. So what Kenneth uh, Arrow decided was that, oh, these five things that I set up, there is no voting system that deals with this. And so he couldn't find a group ranking method for three or more choices that always obeyed all of his fairness conditions. So he began to suspect that such a method might be impossible. And so he did end up going out and proving this. And what he ended up doing then was he won the Nobel Prize for economics because of the results of his proof of his arrows conditions, all five arrows conditions. No system works. 
What he did do, though, was he figured out a system that was pretty good, and that is approval voting. Approval voting just means that you vote for the people or the candidates or the things that you want and say, yeah, I'm okay with that. Now, it could be one, could be five, could be however many that you would approve of. You would vote for those, and then we just tally up all the votes. And so here, uh, I left this in. This is a drink, but it could be the candidate. Whoever has the most votes would be. Okay, so let's go to this example. So if I do approval voting with my top two vote getters, that means that this, these eight people are going to say, yes, I approve of A and B. These five people are going to approve of B and C. These six, C and B, and then these seven, D and B. So if we add all those up, what that means then for us is that A is going to have eight votes from here and no other A's. And if you look at B, B is going to have eight. Oh, yeah, we like, we like B. We like candidate. Oh, we like candidate B, too. We like candidate B. Oh, and they like candidate B. I think this is going to be a runaway election. And then if we go to C, C would have five and six. And D, D would just have these seven. Okay? So what happens then is that B is going to take all of the votes here. So that would be 26 approve of B and so B is going to be the overall winner by approval method by using the top two vote getters. What if I change this to the top three? What does that mean? Well that means that I'm going to approve of and this is just a kind of a represented way to try to figure this out but then I would say that all three of these would be approved by each one of these. Now in reality one person might approve of just the two here, and then one person in here might approve of all three, or one might approve of all four, so on. But this is just one way for you to see the results here on what we're doing. Now, you could add those up and figure out what additionally, uh, additional things that we have. Here, we're going to have eight Cs. So you're going to add that in. Here, you're going to have five Ds, and then six and then here you're going to have seven more C's. And if you do that, now all of a sudden we have a tie because we have B and C both being approved of the same amount. Yeah? So you would have a tie between B and C. So that would be how you do the approval voting. So if I say top two candidates, that's just a contrived mechanism to get you to see what happens if people do approve. All right, so that's what we have here so far. We'll talk about uh, arrows conditions a little bit more in class, but you should have approval voting down. Also, you should have done that beginning of the note sheet and completed your notes and done the practice so that you know how to deal with all those other different voting systems that we've had previous for that next quiz. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day.